So here is something a little bit different from what you might have seen from EDUB services in the past. If you've been following us for a while, then you'll know that our bread and butter is classic cars for a variety of reasons that I won't go into in this video because it's a little bit boring. But here we have the modern VW T6.1. And I'm gonna be telling you all about the reasons why us as a classic car restorer are for some strange reason suddenly bothered in a modern VW. My name is Kit Lacey and welcome to EDUB Services. So I wanna start off by pointing out the elephant in the room. Uh, some of you may have even been in touch with EDUB in the past to ask us about electrifying some vehicles that are deemed by us as something that's too modern. And I just want to talk about that for a second because it is unfortunately incredibly important to the industry that we are a part of. Obviously, uh, converting a vehicle to electric is a very complicated process. But the other thing that makes it so difficult is that you are changing a vehicle from what it was originally manufactured to be to something in a lot of ways that is completely different. And therefore it's got to be uh, legal for you to actually use the vehicle. Uh, there's no point in spending tens of thousands of pounds on a electric conversion just to be left at the end of it with you not being able to actually drive it on the road. We've been aware of some of these concerns within uh, the UK uh, for quite a number of years and we try our best to keep aware of what the different rules and regulations are at any one time so that uh, as we are converting vehicles that nothing comes as too much of a surprise to the customers. So rest assured we are working on something that will be able to solve this problem but right now as it stands the DVLA who are responsible for authorizing the registration and conversion of a vehicle have drawn a line in the sand to do with how they deal with different vehicles. There's obviously a whole load of background to this and maybe if you're watching this from the DVLA you could tell me a little bit more about why this year happens to be so important but the year is 2001 for some reason if your vehicle was manufactured before January 2001, if that's the stamp that's on the registration document, then for some reason it's quite straightforward, or at least a lot more straightforward, for a company like ours to authorize the electrification of that vehicle. If, however, your vehicle was registered, stamp on the document of any date from 2001 onwards, then the DVLA will at first register your vehicle as electric and will then revert back to petrol or diesel straight away. And we're not sure why. And this is difficult for a handful of reasons. You've got the immediate cost saving issues that won't apply to you with your modern vehicle. Being, if you're uh, trying to drive in a, a ultra low emission zone, you won't get a fine if you're electric. Or there's certain areas within the country where being an electric vehicle or driving in certain lanes will live, let you have that privilege if you are in an electric vehicle. And all of that is done from registering and scanning your registration plate to see what your vehicle is being registered at on their system. But more importantly, if you were involved in an incident in your vehicle, then the emergency services would be called out and they would come to the vehicle and they would read your registration plate on their systems and they would see that your vehicle is petrol or diesel and not electric, not filled with 400 volts, which of course it would be. And so then the emergency services would go to your vehicle and would treat the vehicle normally with cutting equipment as if it was not electric. And that is just too risky. Um, we won't be um, associated with anything like that, but we want to make sure mainly that people are kept safe and that these conversions are kept that way for the long run. Now, that's the way that the system is working currently within the UK. We are actively part of an um, organisation who is trying to rectify some of these issues um, and be more of a, a safer kind of central place where electric conversion organisations such as ourselves uh, can be approved of by insurers, by the emergency services, by the Department of Transport and make sure that everybody is safe within these circumstances. So that doesn't quite answer why I'm still talking about a T6.1. Now this particular vehicle has been lent to us from an organization uh, down south from us in the UK, an organization called Transporter HQ. Uh, now they have already published a couple of videos about this vehicle on their YouTube channel. So if you haven't seen them, go and check them out. I'll put a button 
somewhere around here to go and have a look at those guys. Um, but yeah, they had an idea to take a VW T6.1, make it Tesla powered, give it 1,000 brake horsepower. Yes, that's 1,000 horses. I won't go into the calculations of that either because apparently it's wrong. It's not a thousand horses. Anyway, 1,000 brake horsepower is nestled underneath this vehicle and it's going to be made for the um, ex simple purpose of doing the Nürburgring over in Germany. Um, so we're at the stage now where this vehicle has been converted. The conversion is finished by ourselves um, and it's going back over to Transport HQ um, to be finished off. And I'll show you what I mean as we take a little look inside. Uh, voila. This is maybe the most intense roll cage I've ever seen. In this vehicle, we actually have a about a 60 kilowatt hour Chevy pack inside this vehicle. And we've had to split that pack because in its original format, if you've ever seen a Chevy pack, it's kind of long and flat with a kind of bulge on the very end of it. That bulge wouldn't fit underneath. So we've had to remove the bulge and place it inside the vehicle. And all of that has required custom fabrication. So most of the modules are underneath the vehicle in a custom box that's been bolted underneath. Obviously to withstand the kind of G-forces that this vehicle is going to be going through around Nürburgring. And then the final module is just inside here as well. One of the other beauties of doing this vehicle actually has been there's been quite a lot of space back here in and amongst the roll cage that we have. So we've also got our charger back here. Um, we're putting fast charging on this, 6.6 .6 kilowatts, no need for rapid um, because we're just going to go and do a couple of runs and then maybe recharge. So no need for all the rapid uh, systemization. We've got our DC-DC converter, we've got our ECB control board, um, and then all of the clever bits that are all around there as well. So this kind of summarizes some of the, the main areas that we've been dealing with here, and I can't quite show you what's going on underneath. Um, but yeah, it's been quite nice to be in it like this. I've got no idea what it's gonna look like once Transporter HQ have finished wrapping it. I don't know if they're gonna do anything inside. Um, that'll be quite fun to find out on a future video. Um, but maybe for now, that's what it looks like on inside here let's move around to the cab to show you what a vw t 6.1 cab looks like with all the plastic removed let's have a look so here we have it inside here this is what if you've ever been inside a vw t 6.1 this is what it looks like behind all that lovely plastic so we've got wires everywhere and pretty much all of them don't relate to what we need to do. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what it all looks like here. There's no seats in. We've got our trademark EDUB seats. We just needed a seat, so we found a deck chair. And that's done a reasonable job of being able to actually drive this thing around um, before it goes off to THQ. So in here, we have fitted, um, make, we replaced the throttle pedal uh, movement, the actuator with, within there to link up to our own systems. There's going to be quite a bit done around here to do with um, the existing camber system and to do with the display. That's going to be altered as well. And we've added a little bit of a wiring loom right over there, which is mainly our control system. And that's done actually by controlling. So there are two drive units, two two drive units within this vehicle, one dual uh, Tesla motor in the front, one dual Tesla motor in the back. The one in the back is rated as a performance model, rated at around 600 brake horsepower, 400 brake horsepower rated in the front, giving you your 1,000. We actually have controls here for both drive units independently, and they're um, quite uh, intelligently set up so that you can safely drive, just if you're driving around, just transporting the vehicle on and off trailers or to different locations around the track, um, you can just use the front motor as standard. Um, and that's nice and gentle, works quite nicely. But then when you're on track mode, pressing the button there will activate the rear drive unit and will also activate a certain mode within those two drive units. Uh, and they're both on separate gear selectors as well. So um, what that means is in theory, you should be able to drive nice and super fast, straight forward. Um, we're gonna program all of that once the whole vehicle is finished. But you should technically also be able to put one drive unit in forwards and one in reverse and do some pretty crazy tire burning. We'll see. Um, everything else inside here is a little bit standard um, and yeah it'd be quite exciting to see we've never actually seen this vehicle with any of this put back together again uh, so I'm really looking forward to once it's gone back to THQ um, to see what that kind of turns out to look like um, one kind of final thing to show you is just let's have a look in the bonnet so let's take a quick look at the brains of the operation so normally in the bonnet here would be a pretty chunky engine but instead 
it's now filled with pretty much nothing. Um, if I show you inside here, the uh, 12 volt battery is still in its original location. There's a handful of steering and braking bits and pieces, which are also in the same location. But most of the rest of the space here is gone. Now, what you see here are actually three uh, radiators, one, two, and three. They are for each of the different cooling systems that we need. We're keeping them all separate because the first thing that's gonna fail on this, or at least become a problem on this, is gonna be temperature. Temperature of the drive units and potentially temperature of the batteries and the connections as well. So all three of those, drive unit one, drive unit two, and batteries are on three separate systems. Uh, and they've all been designed with this uh, really beautiful, quite smart um, battery, sorry, radiator framing system here that's holding all of them steady within the front. Um, and then we're gonna have some uh, quite powerful, a number of powerful coolant pumps, which are gonna run the whole system uh, and keep the coolant moving really fast through the system here. Obviously placing the radiators in the front here is also really great because it's the maximum airflow that they're gonna get. So even the rear drive unit, which is suspended underneath, has its cooling systems coming right to the front. Some pretty chunky pumps on there. We're gonna have fans on these radiators as well to assist with any of the driving, any of the cooling that's needed. And also mainly for uh, cooling down between track races so if we've done a certain uh, lap um, and we need to cool down then we want those fans to actively be able to get those systems as cool as possible as quick as possible so yeah this has been engineered to be as efficient as we possibly possibly can um, to get the best performance out of Nürburg as we go but it is a bit odd isn't it to not have a huge chunky engine you can just about spy the drive unit down there as well just nestled in between on a custom subframe there as well you can also just make out i don't know if you can see it through there uh there's the the bottom of the um under under box battery box with the orange connection on there as well so you can just get to it through there but that's what goes on inside here. Um, hopefully that will do the best with the efficiency to make sure that the drive units and the batteries are working as best that they can. So maybe you're watching this video and you're saying, yeah, whatever, 1,000 brake horsepower, not interested. Super Tesla motors, not interested. Cooling systems, you know, really sophisticated and efficient. Cool not interested. Well, here is a gimmicky feature just for you. Voila type 2 charging port behind the VW logo. If that doesn't get you, then I don't know what will. Thanks so much for watching. If you have loved what you've seen here today and you're keen to see more of it, then why not subscribe to our channel? If you have any questions about this vehicle or about any of our other classics, then why not head to edubconversions.co.uk and go to the contact us page and drop us an email. Remember that modern vehicles like this, anything newer than 2001 at the moment, we're unfortunately not able to accommodate because you won't be able to drive it. This is a special case uh, for this particular project. Um, but anything else that you want to know about, just keeping in touch about this project or maybe asking us about another classic that you want converted, then please get in touch. We'd be really looking forward to hearing from you there. So thanks again for watching and we will see you again next time.